In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called minimum cost climbing stairs. So we basically given an integer array and we want to find the minimum cost to reach the top of the stairs. And uh, for each stair that we take, there's a cost. So we want to find the minimum cost to reach the top of the, top of the floor. So you can see here we have a integer array. And then in this case, for each and every single stair that we take, there's a cost. And we want to find the minimum cost, right? So in this case, for the first stair, right, it's going to be 10, the second stair is going to be 15, and the third stair is going to be 20. So we want to figure out the minimum cost to climb to the to the top of the stair, right? So in this case, um, so as you can see, this is our, 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 uh, our finish line. And then in this case, one way we can do this, we can take one step, right, in this case, one by one, right, like this. But this will give us a cost of uh, 10 plus 15 plus 20, right? So another way we can do is we can take two steps. So if we take two steps, in this case, it's going to be 15. And then in this case, the cost, total cost is just 15, right? And of course, this is the minimum, right? The cheapest to get to the top is going to be 15. So in this case, we're just returning the minimum cost that we need to reach to the top of the stair. And then you can we can also combinate this. Like in this case, if we have a situation where we have a lot more stairs, maybe something like this, we can take one step, we can also take another two step, right? In this case, it doesn't have to be like one, 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 or two, 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 we can alternate. We can take one step, we can take another two steps and so on, but we wanna find the minimum cost, right? So you can see that this is a problem of dynamic programming where we have to find the minimum cost or the shortest path to reach the top. And in this case, we cannot do it in a greedy way because every single path that we take can be a valid path. And notice that it says here, you can either start from the step one or you can start with uh, step two, right? And let's take a look at another example where we have something like this, right? So if we have something like this, okay, I'm just gonna draw the, half, uh, the first half, right? So if I have one, hundred, uh, one, another one here, so what's the shortest path or what is the minimum cost? So in this case, we can take one step, right? And another step, and we can also take another two step. So in this case, to f figure out the minimum cost, we have to start to, for each, every stair, we have two decision, right? That's our sub problem, is that for each and every single stair that we take, we have two, two decision. Either, so let's say we're starting here, the first, the first stair, we have two decision. One is we can take the first stair, Right, the, net, uh, the next stair, or we can take two steps. In this case, we're here, right? So in this case is, so we want, and after we land on that stair, right? We want to, we want to do the same thing. We want to either we take one stair or we take another, or we take two steps, right? So we can see here for each and every single decision that we make, we have two decisions. And once we know the answer of those two decisions, we can be able to figure out what's the minimum cost. Let's say we have an example like this, right? We have 10, 15, and 20. So initially we can take once the first step where we're starting at the first step or we're starting at the second step. So let's say we're starting at the first step. So initially we have 10, right? We starting at the first step. So we have to pay the cost. And then in this case, we can decide to choose to take the, the first step or we take the second step. So if we take the first step, we have 15, right? So now we have the sum of 25. If we take the second step, we have 10 and 20. Okay, so in this case, if we take the first step, you can see that we have to ha make the same two decisions, right? We, have, we still have to make two decisions. Either we take 10, 15, 20, which give us sum of 45, or we have to take just two step, which give us, which to the end, which pretty much is the last or the, the finish line, right? So this will give us a, um, a sum of 25, right? So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to return the minimum cost for traversing this path to its parent. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, well, parents, the cost for taking, for traversing this, uh, for uh, traversing this path, right? For making this decision is 45 and the cost for making this decision is 25 so then parent stack will have to decide who has the smallest uh, cost in this case 25 has the smallest cost 
So we're just going to return back to its parents. And now let's say we're going to down to this path. Then we have the same thing. And in this case, if we take doesn't matter if we take one step or two step, the end, it will give us a, a total sum of 30, right? So if that's the case, then we can just also return back to its parent and say, okay, the, the cost for making this decision is 30. So who has the smallest? Well, here it's gonna return 25 because 25 is smaller. So now we have 25 and 30. So who has the smallest? In this case, 25, right? So it makes sense. If we're starting at here, like if we're starting at here, we have two decisions. Either we take 15 or we take 20. And if we take 15, we then we take another two step, then we pretty much reach the finish line. And if we take uh, the, the second step, which is 10 and 20, and then we doesn't matter if we take one step or two steps. We're at the end. We're reaching to the to the uh, to the finish line no matter what. So in this case, we're getting a um, uh, a minimum cost of twenty five. But that's one path, right? Let's say we're taking fifteen, for example. Let's say we're starting at the second step, fifteen. So we still have two decisions. Either we take this one right here, or we take the next one, right? If we take the first one, we have fifteen and twenty. And the second one in this case is just going to be 15. And then this path is already done. And what we can do is we can just return back to his parent and say the cost for making this decision is 15, total cost. And then for a cost for making this decision is just going to be 35, right? So who has the smallest? In this case, 15. So what we know is that for the previous uh, decision tree, we have the minimum cost of 25. And for this, uh, this, uh, this recursion tree, we have the minimum cost of 15. So who has the smallest? In this case, 15, right? To do this in code, first, I'm going to create an integer array called cache. And uh, we're also going to make the cost integer array in a global variable. So what we're going to do is going to say this.cost is equal to cost and uh, this.cache is equal to new integer with the size of cost.length. We're basically going to say for each and every single position that we have in our cache array, we're going to compute the minimum cost for each and every single position, right? And at the end, we're just going to return the minimum cost for uh, the either we take the first or the, 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 the first step or we start at the second step, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to have a helper function, right? We're going to say, so start index zero if we start at index zero we're going to have helper start at index zero and we will calculate the minimum cost if we start at zero right we also going to have start index one we will calculate the minimum cost if we start at index one at the end we're just going to return the minimum right either we start at index zero or we start at index one okay and now let's try to create this uh, integer, uh, in this case, a helper function, right? This helper function takes the index where we're going to start. And then what we're going to do is that first, we're going to define our base case. Our base case is that if our current index is out of bound, we can just say that the minimum cost is just going to be zero, right? The minimum cost. It, and then we're going to make our decision, right? And either we take one step or two step. And then what's the minimum cost if we take one step? And what's the minimum cost if we take the two step? And then at the end, we're just going to figure out the minimum cost. It would take one step or two step plus the cost for taking the current step, right? So let me show you. Basically, first, we're going to do our base case is if index is actually bigger than or equal to cost.length. And then we can return zero because that's the total cost if we take that future step, right? So that's going to be the minimum cost for taking the current step. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say if we take one step, right? So if, let's say if the index is not bigger than or equal to cost.length, so we're gonna say if take just one step is equal to helper, right, index plus one. Okay, if we take one step, what's the minimum cost, okay? And if we take two step, what's the minimum cost, okay? Once we know the minimum cost, for either we take one step or two step, we're gonna find the minimum cost if either we take one step or two step, okay? So in this case, we're just gonna return uh, math.min, the minimum value that we take one step or take two step, 
Okay, and then we're gonna plus the current index value, plus the, the current stair cost, right? So this is gonna be cost at index. So this will give us the answer. So now if we were to run the code, and you can see we have 60, but if we submit the code, it will give us time exceed error. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out how we can be able to cache this. So to cache this, uh, we can say if we visit that position before, if we calculated this before, so cache at index does not equal to null, then we can just return cache at index, right? And then what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna cache this in our integer array. So if we run this, you can see we also have accepted. So now we can try to submit and you can see we have our success. But I'm also gonna show you how we can do this using a bottom to up approach. So to do this using a bottom up approach, like let's try to think. So if we are at the last position, right? If we're at the bottom of our recursion tree, what's the minimum cost to take the current step? Like what's the minimum cost to reach the top of the floor? Well, it's gonna be 20, right? The minimum cost to make up to the top of the floor is gonna be 20 because that's the cost for the current stair. So what we can say is that we can start at the bottom, right? And then and then what, what about this one? So what's the minimum cost if we take here, right? Is either uh, for the one step, right? The minimum cost if we take one step or the minimum cost if we take two steps. So if we were to take the minimum cost for the two step, right? The minimum cost if, if we are, uh, at the step two is gonna be zero, and the minimum cost for step one is just gonna be 20, right? So who has the minimum? In this case, it's just gonna be uh, zero, right? So zero plus the current cost for the current stair will give us the minimum cost for the current, uh, for the minimum cost for the current stair to reach the top of the floor. So we can use the same algorithm, and uh, what we're gonna do here is we're going to, um, basically bring this out. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the last position. So we're gonna have n is equal to cost.length. So we're starting at the last element in the array, like we're starting at the bottom and we're iterating all the way to the first element that we have in our array. So it's gonna be i is bigger than or equal to zero, i minus minus. And for each and every single iteration, we're gonna have to make two decisions, right? For each and every single element that we have. So in this case, for the first element, right? So if we take one step, initially it's gonna be zero, right? And then we first have to check to see if it's out of bound. So i plus one, if it's not out of bound, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say take one step is equal to cost at, um, i plus one, right? Or sorry, cache at i plus one because we want to know the pre-computed value, the minimum cost for if we take the, uh, if we take one step, right? And then, um, and then we also had to figure out what's the minimum cost if we take two step. So if i plus two is less than n, then take two step is equal to cache at i plus two. Okay, we know the pre-computed value because we, we are going from the, the, the end all the way to the start of the array. So in this case, we are going to take the pre-computed value and assign that to the take two step or take one step. And at the end, what we're gonna do is that for cache at i, right, is equal to the minimum. The minimum either we take one step, right, or if we take two step. Once we know, figure out the minimum cost to take either one step or two step, we're gonna plus the current cost for taking the current stair, right? So this will give us the minimum cost for uh, climbing to the top of the stair for the current, uh, current position, okay? And at the end, uh, because we are going to um, start um, either the first one and the second one, right? Because either, either we start at the first stair or the second stair, so what we had to do is we had to return the minimum value. The minimum value, there is gonna be cash at zero, right? 
the minimum cost if we are starting at the first stair or the minimum cost if we are starting at the second stair. And if you look at the constraints, you see that the cost of life is bigger than or equal to two. Okay, so now if we were to run our code and you can see our success, right? So this will give us the time complexity of big O of N where N is the number of elements that we have in our cost. And space complexity will also be big O of N as well because we have a cache array. But how can we be able to optimize this? Well, it seems like all we need is just the, the, the previous two elements, right? To In order to compute the current position, we just need the previous two elements. So what we can do is we can say prev1 is equal to zero and prev2 is also equal to zero. So initially, if we're starting at the bottom, if we're starting at the last position, like the, 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 the cost for um, if we take one step or two step is all zero, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say the minimum cost, right? The minimum cost for current stair is equal to um, the minimum, right? The minimum either we take the previous one or the previous two plus the current cost for taking the current stair, right? And then what we're gonna do is we're going to get uh, prev one. Prev one is gonna be the the pre the first previous element, and then prev two is gonna be the second previous element, right? So we're gonna say prev one is now equal to minimum cost for the current stair, right? Because we're moving on to the next element, and then uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to get prev two, right? The 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 second previous element to equal to the um, the the, the prev one, right? So the previous one. So this the first previous element, right? And then at the end, what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare either we take the first stair or the second stair. So we have prev two or prev one. And if we were to run our code, and let's try to submit our code, you can see we have our success. So this is basically how we improve the time complexity or sorry, the space complexity down to a constant. So this is how we solve the problem and thank you for watching.